Hello everyone, no video today, I mean video, no no, my pretty face, you're not going to see it, but tomorrow you will in person, so aren't you lucky? Okay, so <clears throat> um, one thing uh, that I gotta say first, um, if you look at this thing, uh, oh yeah, see, I gotta go down and click on this thing here to show all the announcements. And if you look at this calendar here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit, zoom in on Zoom. Section two and section six. So here, lab two starts, lab two starts this week on Wednesday and continues on to the, through the next week. <clears throat> but if you look at this thing here, section two and section six, Lab two shows up at the time that there will be no school. School will be closed. It's a, it's a, it's a holiday, okay? So what we need to do is everyone from section two and section six, just for the lab two, you're welcome to join any of the sections that at your convenience. Or if you want to show up this week, just to do lab two. See, it's going to be September... Um, well, lab two. So lab two starts on Wednesday. You can join. Of course, the phone rings. <clears throat> uh, um, <clears throat> See, here's lab two, on September 27th. Here's lab two, September 28th. And October 4th. This is no class and this is no class. So just join any of those to do lab two. It's going to be out of your schedule, but that's the only thing that we can do with the schedule that we are presented with. Now, if you don't, you're welcome to join any of the section one by one, any of those to complete that lab number two. All right, now with lab two, also let me just um, refresh the whole thing. Come on, let's get this thing proper. All right, so here's our class portal announcements. Here is, some people are asking me about uh, what videos should you watch. Here is our YouTube playlist right in the announcements. Here's the link. Now, if I click on that, that's what we get. You see this, this uh, uh, YouTube list, it's being populated because I am recording all our online classes and I'm posting them here. So today's class is going to be right underneath this. All right. Now, here is lab two video. Watch it. All right. It's about an hour. You got to watch that uh, in order to be able to do lab two properly. So this is where you look for the videos. Don't forget to watch this one as well. This is 16 minutes and this is how to read analog. Uh, meters so don't forget that as well um, it will be on the test for sure I'm just going to give you a picture of a needle deflection and range selected in a certain way and I'm going to ask you what is it that the meter shows okay. you need to know we need to know how to read digital and we need to know how to read analog multimeters All right. okay excuse me <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, so now let's get to the to today's class. And today's class is uh, mm, 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 here. It is called multimeters, not multimeters, hand tools. All right. So let's start this class. And right off the bat, we get something funny because. Uh, uh, let me, I'm just look at the, I'm just looking at this. Um, that sounds like life. Okay, good. Remodeling my room. That's why I say next time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you can say that. But I'm really doing that. <laughs> um, so here is the funny, funny thing. Some things never change. Here are the guys that were like you know thousands of years ago. And oh look, this guy is just going to. 
slam his finger with uh, some sort of a wooden uh, stick. And he says, ow, oh, and the other guy's looking. And there's the same thing right now. The same thing happens. So he says, some things never change. Uh, okay, be careful with your hand tools. And right off the bat, you know, it's kind of funny. Yeah, okay, haha. Uh, however, um, there's that misconception sometimes that uh, power tools are more dangerous than... Um, than hand tools. Nothing further from the truth. Power tools and hand tools are tools that you can hurt yourself with. And if you get your finger cut off or smashed like that, does it matter if it was done with something that you plug in or something that you don't plug in? Uh, well, you be the judge. So, the statement I'm going to make, hand tools are just as dangerous as power tools. All right. Let's get some things out of the way. Now, you also have the list of the tools that uh, we're supposed to have uh, for our labs. Pre please bring those tools. I noticed that some people are not bringing some of the tools. And as you notice, as we go along, uh, if you don't bring your tools proper, properly, proper tools, uh, you're going to be uncomfortable in our lab room. So get those tools, as I said, as I listed them, and you'll be fine and happy and you actually learn something that you, you know, you, you paid money for learning, for, for, for joining this class. Might as well get ready and get the most out of it. All right. So here's my vent by the river motivational speech uh, for today. <clears throat> uh, so we need those proper size wire cutting pliers that's what they that's what they look like don't bring those small ones that uh that you're going to use in the other labs like uh your digital circuits lab or ac or dc that you're um making circuits on the breadboards with the really really thin wires those small uh, side cutters or wire cutters are good for that but not for the size of wires that we're using in our lab so get those get the right size that's what they look like these are wire cutting pliers also known as side cutters also known as uh, diagonal cutters and maybe somebody else is going to produce them somewhere in some factory and maybe they want to call them something else. But these are the most common names for that. Okay. All right. Let's see the anatomy of that. Here we have the handles. Okay. Nothing too difficult. Here are the jaws. And the jaws have blades. And of course, all those two handles are cross crisscross connected, physically coupled. And this is called the joint, that everything pivots around that point. So here is as far as the anatomy. Now, take uh, pay attention to the way these are made. We'll talk about them a little bit more later on as we go along, when we talk about ergonomics. Your hands are a very valuable thing, and you might not notice things right now if you strain your hands and in pro like not properly, um, one way or the other. Now, as the years go along, as the year goes by, um, if you don't use your hands properly, you're going to pay for that. Right? And that's all I got to say about that. <clears throat> now, they are also made out of a PVC, some sort of a PVC material. And I'm going to say that these are made for comfort and for ergonomics. What's ergonomics? Ergonomics is a field of study uh, that has to do with um, tools and any kind of objects that are used by humans. Um, and that study is about those objects being fitted properly for our bodies so a chair has to be constructed a certain way so it's well first of all it's comfortable and second of all that it doesn't hurt you if you use it in a long for, for a long time prolonged time and so that's everything else uh, these are made for comfort and for proper ergonomics 
so they are comfortable in your hand and they don't hurt you if you use them time and time again repetitively for a long time. All right. All right. <clears throat> now, these are not the purpose of these handles with the PVC. The purpose is not to, to, in, to isolate you from live wires. They might isolate you from live wires, but it's not their purpose. So do not count on that. If you work on live wires, sometimes you will have to. This is not a measure of protection. All right, now, the other thing is we have snips as opposed to wire cutters, diagonal cutters, or side cutters. Now we have the snips. That's what they look like. Here are snips. These are called grips, linkage screws. There's a bit of a latch if you want to lock it in place. Locking latch, there you go. We got handles. And here's the pivot bald, as opposed to joint right here. Well, okay. And we have blades, but the blades are made a little bit different way. Everything has its purpose and it's designed to perform a certain job. These are wire cutters. They are meant to cut wires. And that's all the purpose for this tool. These are snips. Don't cut wires with that. You're going to strain yourself and you're not going to do a proper job and you won't be efficient. These are meant to cut sheet metal. That's all they are meant for. All right. Now, oh, here's the monkey wrench, also known as adjustable wrench. anatomy of that is here are the jaws and these jaws are adjustable now here is a fixed jaw okay, it's part of the whole assembly and here is the adjustable jaw and how do we adjust the jaw we with our thumb we turn this warm screw and depending which way we turn it this way or that way, these jaws are going to come closer or further apart. Now, <clears throat> here is how we position these uh, jaws. Let's say here is a bolt that we need to turn or a nut that we need to turn and we close our jaws on the, well, on the walls of the bolt. If we turn the bolt this way, okay, in this case, just like we're looking at it, we need to position the wrench this way, like that, like this way here. So the fixed jaw is on the top, yeah, and the adjustable jaw is on the bottom. What does what does this accomplish is that most of the mm, power distribution on how things are going to be pushed is concentrated on this fixed jaw. That's what that's the jaw that's going to do all the job. This one here is going to just be used as a guidance. All the pressure is going to be on this jaw. If we turn it this way, If we were supposed, if we were to turn the bolt and nut this way here, the other way, counterclockwise, we just have to flip this thing upside down. So the fixed jaw is on top. Sorry, so the uh, adjustable jaw is on top and the fixed jaw is on the bottom. So again, most of the pressure is going to fall on the fixed jaw. Let me show you uh, sometime when we see, uh, if you don't, um, during the lab, right, in person. This is adjustable jaw and, you know, there's too many things to go wrong. This thing can come loose. 
there's some part of the assembly, it can slip out if most of the pressure is on this jaw here. <clears throat> what happens when things slip out? Well, you're going to apply a lot of pressure going through my right on the handle. And if something lets go all of the sudden, well, all kinds of things can happen, including you can actually get a whiplash. Now, Google that, what whiplash is. Hopefully, you're going to just get the information about whiplash from Google, not from experience, because it doesn't feel good. Right? Or you can hit yourself. You, you can hit your hand on some objects nearby, or you can, you can hit other people if they're around. And you don't want to get hurt. Well, so here is what I just talked about. If we are turning this this way here, see here, most of the pressure is going to be on this fixed jaw, not the adjustable jaw. And this would be the wrong way. In this case, most of the pressure would be here. Most of the pressure would be concentrated on this adjustable jaw and things can slip out and things can go wrong very quickly. All right, <clears throat> now here's the science of a hammer. It's a very simple thing, very simple tool. However, you also have to know how to use that. And I'm going to show you, next time we see each other in the lab, we're going to actually use the hammers to staple, to, 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 uh, to place, to install this, the wire staples. There's a certain way that the hammer should be handled. There's a certain way the hammer should be well, put in motion. There are center of gravities and all kinds of forces in order for us to make this, to make, uh, to make life easier, not harder. And for the most part, so we could do the job properly. And even more important there, that we don't get hurt. Now, this is a claw hammer <clears throat> versus a uh, ball pin hammer. It has a claw. It has a face. This side of it, it's called a cheek. This one here, this before the face from the main body, from the main head, it's called throat. Here's the head, grip, and the handle. There you go. This claw hammer is for driving nails into a softer material, such as wood. So yes, you're going to hit metal with that, but you're not going to hit metal in large volumes, such as shaping a piece of metal into something else. The nail is a really small piece of metal, and it is being driven into a softer material, such as wood. And you do this thing with the face of that, you hit that nail. The claw is being used for removing nails. You just hook the head of the nail with the claw and you leverage, you do use some leverage. Uh, so the claw pulls the nail out. So here is the thing, here's a statement and a half. A claw hammer is for driving and removing nails only. Okay. You're not supposed to hit metal, large chunks of metal with this hammer. Why is that? The reason for that is that this, this claw hammer is not made for hitting larger chunks of metal. The isotope, the chemical composition of this piece of metal is made in a way that is not supposed to be used on harder, larger chunks of metal. If you do that, chances are that something is going to break away. Something is going to chip away from this hammer and it might hit you in the eye. Somehow by Murphy's law, it's just going to happen. Um, at the worst possible time and in the worst possible way. It's just a Morphe's law. There's a question here. 
And the phone rings again. <clears throat> I gotta do something about that phone as well. I apologize for that. All right. Where were we? Okay, yeah, there's a question on the chat line here. Um, <clears throat> do we need to bring hammers to class? No, we don't. Yeah, you can if you want, but we have some hammers in that blue closet, so we can use that. All right, that's what the claw hammer looks like. You see, that's what the claw looks like here. You just hook this claw onto the head of the nail and swing it out to remove it now here's a ball pin hammer this type of metal here this metal chunk is designed chemically to be able to hit metal metal on metal contact if you need to shape a piece of metal into something or you need to hit any kind of metal on metal contact this is the hammer that you're supposed to use, not just because it's shaped certain way, but because of the chemical composition of this head, right? All right, here's a little quiz just to see uh, what's going on with our knowledge. All right, question one, plastic cover handles on the wire cutting pliers might be used to cut low voltage live electrical wire, true or false. By the way, low voltage, what's in a wall? What's in our wall? Receptacles, which is in North America, 120 volts, AC, 60 hertz, RMS, 120 volts. That is considered low voltage. So, is it true or false? The plastic cover handles are meant to protect you. And I get false, 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 false. Of course, because, yeah, good. Looks like you're paying attention here. Nice. Bang, false. You're right. You're correct. Uh, plastic cover handles are for comfort only. Always cut off electrical power before working on any wires. Okay. Question number two. Uh -oh. <clears throat> All right, when tightening a nut with adjustable wrench, always pull the wrench towards you, never push the, the, the wrench away from you. Here's something we got kind of uh, true or false. Um, aside from <clears throat> the positioning of the jaws, now here's another concept. Do we push it away from us or do we pull it towards us? You get more power when you when you pull towards. You get better leverage, better balance. And what says most importantly, the force of the pulling should be on the fixed jaw. Right? So there are two things. If you're pushing it away from you, yes, sometimes you're going to have no choice. But when you are in the situation that you have no choice and to position yourself in a way that you're pushing this thing away from you, still position the jaws at least in the correct way and be conscious of that, that you are just kind of putting yourself in a little bit more dangerous position that you want to. So be extra careful with that when you're doing it. Sometimes you're, pull, you, you, you're going to apply, uh, well... You might feel you might you might find that you're stronger than you think you are, uh, and you're going to try to push something and just make sure that you have some kind of clearance when things snap all of a sudden and your force of pushing or pulling is still there. Then uh, what's going to happen? Are you safe when that thing happens? Are you going to hit something? Are you going to drive your head into something else? Okay. Also work with a hacksaw. Another question here. What's going on? 
Question three. Claw hammers might be used to strike wood chisels. True or false? Wood chisel is made out of metal. It's made to um, chisel the wood, but the tool is metal, so we got false, false, false. Good. What's happening? False. Claw hammers are for driving and removing nails only. And the reasoning for that, as we remember, it is the chemical composition, the type of isotope, the type of metal. Uh, that is the composition of the metal used for making that hammer. That's what makes the difference. If you use the wrong type of isotope and hit it on metal, things can chip away and hit you right in the eye. Question four. Screwdrivers might be used for the purpose other than driving or removing screws, such as prying open can lids. Ha! Huh. <laughs> Well, um, I hate to tell stories, but I got a, I got a kind of, it's a, it's, a, it's a short one, okay? So, so, so bear with me. Uh, there was one time that I participated in the first aid course, and you will do that as well as you go along. Um, and the, the, the person who was, uh, who was teaching us the first aid uh, thing, uh, she used to work um, in an emergency in the emergency department somewhere up north where there's a tourist country now, right? And she said, that's what she said, that during the summer, during the tourist time, during the holidays time, uh, in the emergency department, most of the calls were, or most of the visits were from the guys who were using, who were kind of improvising the way of how to open the cans. Not with a can opener, but with mostly with knives. And those were the most most frequent injuries there. So use the right tools for the right purpose. You're not my MacGyver, you are not a Rambo, if you know what that is, who that was or is. <clears throat> it doesn't work that way, only in the movies. So false screwdrivers must be used to tighten in and remove. To tighten and remove screws and no for other purpose there you go hand tools safety quiz keep going question number five snips are permissible to cut wire remember the snips all right there we go we got false 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 good you guys are listening oh you're just that smart Wire cutters are correct. Snips are for cutting sheet metal. If you try to cut wires with the, with the snips, you're going to get a really, really bad job done. And uh, eh, no. A proper use of the ball pin hammer is striking chisels and punches. Ah, what's going on here? What do we get? Question number six. Proper use for ball pen hammers is to using is to strike chisels and punches. The true or false? We got true. We got true. We got, okay, good. True. Ball pen hammers are specifically hardened to strike chisels and punches. It has to do with the metal on metal contact. Oh wow! There is more. Oh wow! Okay, let's see here. Oh, that's the last question for that for that kind of a confirmatory quiz safety goggles or glasses should always be worn whenever you are using hand tools true 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 yes not because you can get kicked out of class <laughs> uh, but because they actually work i'm not going to bore you with the story but first time i had i was on my own with a job i had to do something that required safety glasses. But I was so excited. I'm not in college anymore. That was a long time ago. I said, nobody's telling me to wear safety glasses. I can do this. I'm so cool, right? Bang. First thing I did, uh, it showed me that, uh, yes, I, I need to do safety glasses. And I paid for that the hard way. So eye protection PPE should always be worn when working with hand tools to prevent eye injury. Yeah, there you go, huh? 
All right, for the for people with hard stomach, here's the statement here. Hand tools can be just as dangerous as power tools and other equipment when not properly, and here's the thing, if not properly used, stored, or maintained. <clears throat> now, here's the age-old question, almost like a cliche question. Uh, what's more dangerous, a dull knife as a tool, a dull knife or a sharp knife? Well, if you're supposed to use that knife for cutting, the knife should be nice and sharp so it does the job properly. What happens? Yes, you're correct. What happens if we have dull knife? If it's supposed to be sharp. If you have a dull knife, which means the condition of the tool is not as it should be. So you're going to handle that tool not as intended. You're going to improvise how to compensate for the condition of the tool. And when you do that, then you still, you can still cut yourself with a dull knife. Right? Uh, what's the second statement here? Your hand tools are an important part of your job and should be treated, cared for, and used in a professional manner. What happens if you use it in a non-professional uh, manner? <clears throat> well, this happens and this happens. And you know what, guys and gals? <laughs> it actually happens. That's all I gotta say about that one. <laughs> hand tools on the job. It's estimated that about 8% of industrial accidents involve the unsafe use of hand tools, ball, manual, and power. These accidents result from using the wrong tool for the job or using the right tool incorrectly. Get this thing there, right? failing to wear personal protective equipment or falling to follow approved safety guidelines. What's this thing here? Can I zoom in? There you go. Now, <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that this picture is taken by someone who was trying to teach and show how to not use a utility knife to cut soft piece of material. What happens if this thing goes? Well, it's just like you're trying to shoot. If you belong to an archery club or anything like that, if you shoot an arrow, well, you're trying to hit the target, but you have to be always conscious what's behind the target. If you miss it, where is that arrow or bolt going to go? Same thing here. Well, always be conscious. Remember when I was showing you how to use the bonding wire, the bare copper wire, as a rip cord in order to strip the NMD90 wire. I was already showing you, okay, be conscious of where things go. Don't drive that thing into your stomach. Don't hit your friend with the elbow if something lets go. Don't drive that thing into your friend's eye. Be conscious of how things are going to project when something goes wrong and how you can prevent that from happening, right? injury from happening, okay? Now here, um, uh, again, I hope, and I'm pretty sure, there's no way, there is no way people can be that stupid. I'm pretty sure somebody was trying to uh, be funny on showing how to not use tools in a way that are not proper. I'm pretty sure this was done. Both of them were done for the safety kind of education purposes. And this is the close up of that. All right, that's funny. Okay, where, where are we here? <clears throat> 1234, we are moving along pretty good. 
we're going to do some reading and some explanation. And uh, we are not going to get to the end of this uh, presentation, we're almost halfway somewhere there now. We're going to continue in person tomorrow. Now, let's take a look at this slide here. Never use any tool, hand or power, unless you are trained to do so. I'm going to stop on this one here and reflect a little bit. There was a time that I wanted to trim some tree branches. And I talked to my neighbor and he goes, yeah, you know, if you use the chainsaw, it's going to be much faster. And some of the branches were kind of thicker than others. So I said, yeah, sure. He goes, yeah, you can use mine if you want. Go ahead. So I borrowed that chainsaw. But I just wanted to kind of make sure that I know what I'm doing because I never used the chainsaw. So I, well, went to the university. It's called YouTube University, just to kind of see what YouTube has to say about chainsaws. And some of the first videos were on safety. So I watched a couple of the safety videos on the chainsaws, and I just decided not to use that because I wasn't sure that I'm doing everything correctly. One, two, I didn't have all the PPE necessary for the chainsaw. And I just said, it's not worth it. So I just, you know, this the, it just wasn't worth the risk. And things can go pretty quickly. Like for example, if you're cutting, uh, if you're cutting a larger branch, there could be a nail or a bolt or a piece of metal hidden in it. Because if you, uh, you know, some people like to hang swings from the trees and then they abandon the swings, then the tree keeps growing and it's going to cover and hide. It's going to be inside whatever the bolt was there or the hook or something, piece of metal. When that thing hits the chainsaw, it bounces back right into your face. The chainsaw, that is. Okay. All right. So here's the thing. Never use any tool, hand or power, unless you're trained to do so. Inspect tools before each use and replace or repair if worn or damaged. Self-explanatory, I don't think I have to expand on that. Clean tools after every use. Well, if you just have a little junk drawer with a couple of screwdrivers and maybe a piece of tape and tape measure that's in your kitchen junk drawer and you use these things once every six months, yeah, okay, but we're talking about using the tools every day for, for, for our job. Uh, then the use of that of these tools are quite more heavily, quite more heavy. So tools should be clean and inspected. And of course, this is, we already talked about that. If it's a cutting edge, it should be sharp, unless it's meant to be not sharp, depending on the tool, but usually if it's a cutting edge, it should be kept sharp or proper for the type of tool and type of the use of that, type of use of that for that tool. Never test the cutting edge with your fingers. Test it on your friend's fingers. No, just kidding. Test on scrap materials instead. Again, things can go south pretty quick and it's really bad. <clears throat> If you get hurt on the job, if you're doing some installation and you get cut and you can, we can, sometimes it's just, you know, it happens. Uh, once I got, I cut my finger, well, I made a deep cut into my finger and not by a tool. I didn't realize that some of those light textures that are right high in the ceiling, uh, some of the chassis, um, the reflectors of the lights, fluorescent lights, they were not really rounded off because nobody's supposed to go there. Nobody's supposed to touch those. So, you know, cheaper production, skip one process, skip one step. Those things were razor blade sharp. I didn't realize that. I brushed my hand against that, bang. You know what? It was 8.30 in the morning and it was just the beginning of the day. It sucks when that happens. Right? Carry tools correctly, never put sharp or pointed tools in your pockets. No, well, you bend over to pick things up, you squat, you go up, go down. 
Uh, if you forget that you have some sharp tools in your pockets, well, you could have a situation that's not very happy. Right? Lightly oil metal tools and store in clean, dry place to prevent rust. Again, take care of your, take care of your tools. They will thank you. If you don't take care of your tools properly, they might kill you. And I'm not joking. It will kill. Right? Uh, <clears throat> wear personal protective equipment, such as safety. Now, in this presentation, the safety goggles is mentioned. We use the term safety glasses or spectacles or specs. Goggles are a little bit different. Goggles um, are the rubbery type of sealed glasses that are meant to be used when things can get can splash onto your face and into your eyes. So they're kind of sealed around. We use glasses. But whenever you're supposed to use goggles, use goggles. Whenever you're supposed to use glasses, use glasses, depending on what you are doing and what the requ safety requirements are. Um, do, 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 do. do not use a tool if its handle has splinters burrs, cracks, splits, or if the head of the tool is loose. If the tool is not in the proper condition, it will hurt you. Sometimes, quite often, we apply a certain type of power. And <clears throat> if you develop the right habits, because what happens is this. Mm, quite often, you're going to long, you're going to work long hours. And when the long hours kick in, uh, your attention, um, the safety consciousness kind of drops, whether you want it or not. You become more careless, not careless, but uh, less conscious of what might hurt you or not when you get tired. So develop proper habits. So you don't have to think about it all happens by yourself, that you're safe. Right? Now, here's the thing that just came to my mind as an example um hockey canada hockey right why not you why don't we use hockey example uh some years ago you know there was that uh, uh coach's corner uh don cherry um he pointed out something because somebody hit the crossbar with the pack it was almost pretty much like a slam dunk kind of thing whoever it was hit the pack Bang, it goes in the crossbar. He goes, kids, that's what? That's, uh, yeah, <laughs> suits. Um, yeah. So what happens is he says that he pointed, he made a pretty good point. Right? He goes, quite often people pr just, just do it for fun. Hit the crossbar with the puck just time and time again, just so they could do it. Well, you develop the muscle memory to do that. And when you're in the game, and you're going to shoot that puck. Well, it's going to hit the crossbar because you got yourself used to doing that. So here, develop proper habits. So if you develop proper habits, we are habitual creatures as humans. If we develop proper habits, things are going to happen by themselves, whichever way we go. If we practice safety, we are going to default into doing things the safe way and proper way when we are tired and we are, when our attention attention is a little bit, you know, not as sharp as it should be. Well, <clears throat> all right. Number 10. Yeah. Do not use impact tools such as hammers, chisels, punches, or steel stakes that have mushroomed heads. And... That's what a mushroomed head looks like. Right. This thing has been hit a few too many times. Of course, what can happen? Well, you hit it and one of those burrs can break away and it can actually, with the energy of the, of the impact by the tool or hammer that you hit with, it can actually have pretty good energy to travel. And usually you hold this thing close, you know, within the reach of hand because you this is the handle that you're supposed to handle. Right? 
Well, um, if there is a metal object um, traveling at a high speed and it's close to you, it pretty much almost acts like a you know almost like a bullet. It's not gonna probably not gonna you know go into your body and kill you just like a bullet from a gun, but it can still uh, if it hits your face, um, it can uh, it can it can cause some unwanted damage as opposed to wanted damage, right? Um, all right. Okay, so it's quarter two. Uh, we're going to stop uh, this class at this slide, and I'm going to we're going to resume this hand tools thing uh, tomorrow in person. Cool, you guys are cool, but not as cool as I am. And that's uh, <laughs> that's my motto for today. <laughs> All right, love you guys, and I will talk to you tomorrow. See ya.